I really wasn't expecting to make this video, but I've been talking about Marvel Rivals on Twitter basically since it became a game. If you haven't been following, Marvel Rivals was teased about 48 hours ago as a 6v6 Overwatch style hero shooter but with Marvel characters. And that sounds like exactly my kind of game. I did a pretty big thread on Twitter where I went over what each of the different characters do in Marvel Rivals to give you a better idea of what characters are interesting to you uh, because I spent a silly amount of time re-watching the trailer over and over again. So I might as well share all the details I found. And I was very surprised by the amount of interest in such a tweet. So I decided I'd kind of take all the information that's in that Twitter thread and convert it into a video. And I'm gonna give you some even extra pieces of detail. Okay, so first things first, before we jump into any character specific specific stuff, I want you to know about the universal rules of the game. As we just talked about, it's a 6v6 hero shooter. There are currently two game modes that we've seen. Game modes, I assume, are going to function relatively similar to Overwatch. It's not like you're going to queue for a game of Escort. You're just going to queue for a game of Rivals or Quick Match or Ranked or whatever, and you'll be randomly assigned to whatever the game modes are. And with that in mind, there are two game modes. There is a game mode that we'll call Escort Mode for now, even though we don't really have uh, an actual official name for any of these game modes yet. And then a quote unquote King of the Hill mode. Those should be relatively self-explanatory to you if you've played other shooters before, but I'm going to use this video as kind of a blanket slate. So even if you've never played a shooter before, I want everything to be understandable in this video to you. Escort means we're going to have some type of a payload or something that we push along the map. So on the offensive side, your goal is going to be taking whatever your escort to the other side of the map where the player where the enemy players start off and the enemy players are going to be trying to prevent you from making that happen there's going to be some amount of time that's allotted to the defense team where they're trying to survive and it's pretty much as simple as that think of it as a really intricate version of tug of war the king of the hill mode i feel like even if you haven't played an fps game before king of the hill should be a pretty straightforward concept whoever's inside of the hill is collecting points there are a handful of ways that you could do a king of the hill mode so it could be whoever has the most points at the end of a certain amount of time it could be the first to get this amount of points so there's slightly different implications there but for the most part the king of the hill game mode should be fairly straightforward get more points equal win uh, we've seen health packs around the map so these act as like mini objectives to fight over i don't think that there are other types of buffs so like movement speed buffs or anything like that so far i've just seen health packs so if there are other types of buffs that you can pick up around the map I just haven't seen them yet. Uh, there's some destructible environments. It does seem like it's a relatively big feature. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we've seen destruction from a bunch of different sources. We've seen destruction from regular guns, ultimate abilities, and regular abilities. So I don't think it's as simple as a big ability destroys stuff, or I don't think it's as simple as certain types of abilities destroy things. I think it's literally just going to be the case that these environments have a certain amount of health, and once you deal that much damage, they get destroyed. The example I'll use for this is this clip of uh, Rocket Raccoon. The wall he's shooting at, or he's not really shooting at the wall, he's shooting at enemies, he's just missing. Uh, but the wall that's behind the enemies he's trying to shoot at does get destroyed, uh, and there's no special abilities being used here at all. It's just damage. It's just his regular left click. So yeah, that's my guess is that there's just kind of like an invisible health bar on these destructible environment objects. And I would be highly surprised if everything was destructible. It seems like there's just certain objects on the map that are considered destructible. Like I don't think you'll be able to destroy like buildings that you can run through. But these destructible objects do make a big difference uh, gameplay wise. In one clip, we can see Black Panther destroying a bridge, right? That's a point A to point B that is no longer crossable. Uh, in the particular example that they show, I don't think it's like a particularly important bridge. Like I don't think it's going to make or break any game plans, but you could see how that type of destruction leads to um, lots of situations where people have to alter their gameplay style or their game plan. All right, before we jump into characters, I want to talk about team up abilities and how they work. And for full transparency's sake, I'm recording this section about team ups a day after I recorded everything else. And the reason for that is because I've learned a little bit more information about how team up attacks work and my initial interpretation of them was completely wrong. So my initial interpretation of team up abilities was that team up abilities were existing abilities that were modified if you had the assigned character on your team. So for example, let's take a look at Hulk. Hulk has an infused ability and my interpretation of the infused ability is that you could use it on any character but Iron Man got some type of benefit for you using it on him specifically. That is not the case. Infused must be used on Iron Man specifically. Uh, we have two reasons to believe this. One is the website description. The specific quote from the website is Hulk can unleash gamma energy to help charge up Iron Man's armor for massive damage. And another reason we think this is every single character that had a, an ability tied to the C key happened to use a team up effect with that C key. With one exception, Namor had a turret 
that was bound to his C button and did not have a team up attack. Now Luna Snow has a team up ability with Namor, but Namor does not have a team up ability with Luna Snow. At least we haven't seen one yet. And I would assume that Namor is not going to have a team up ability because his key that you would normally use a team up ability with is occupied by his turret, which is a core part of his kit. So yeah, team up abilities are these unique abilities that only are available to you while you have an assigned character on your team. For example, Groot can't ride any character. He has to ride Groot. Uh, Hulk needs to charge up Iron Man, Luna Snow needs to give her buff to Namor, but keep in mind for the rest of this video, when I'm talking about team-up attacks, I'm under the wrong impression. I'm underneath the impression that team-up attacks, or team-up abilities I should say, are just modified versions of abilities the character otherwise has access to, and that assumption is wrong. So have that in the back of your head, and let's jump into some characters. Starting off with Iron Man. Iron Man is a DPS character. Again, I'm trying to make this video as adaptable for non-FPS players as possible. It stands for damage per second, so I'm going to refer to all damage dealing characters that means characters that are focused on damage obviously everyone can deal damage but characters that are focused on specifically the role of reducing the enemy's health bar to zero are going to be referred to as dps characters he has 100 ammo and 250 health 250 seems about average for these damage dealing characters I haven't seen anybody lower i have seen someone higher but generally 250 is like the spot for uh, these damage dealing characters. Let's first take a look at his shift ability because I think it's the most interesting one to look at. It's this glide. Now what's curious about this glide is that he moves very rigidly. He kind of just looks like he goes from point A to point B. So I'm wondering if maybe Iron Man's flight, and keep in mind in this trailer we only ever see him flying, but I'm kind of thinking that Iron Man's movement in the air might be fairly restricted compared to what you might expect out of Iron Man gameplay. Because in both clips where we can see him using this kind of glide ability, he moves like an arrow. He moves completely straight from point A to point B. My current interpretation is that it just moves the character from point A to point B as opposed to being like an additional movement. Honestly, this ability alone makes it really hard for me to think about how Iron Man works, but I thought I would mention it anyway. Moving on to his stance switch, here's an example of it before and after. Basically, these little attachments that are coming out of Iron Man, I think that this is his stance switch effect. I don't really know what the difference between the two forms is going to be. We can see that on the HUD, his left click and his right click icons change dramatically both before and after him using E. It's really hard to gauge exactly what this ability is doing, but basically I think while he's in this stance, he'll just be stronger in some way. We can actually take a look at a quick example of him using the same ability both in this stance switch form and outside of the stance switch form. So keep in mind that he also has a buff from Hulk, a team up ability buff from Hulk here on the left. So there's also some visual discrepancies going on uh, because of that. Uh, but if we look at Iron Man on the left, we see he does this big green beam and he's got these gadgets kind of coming out of his back and assisting him with that big beam. Now, if we go over to the clip on the right, you can see Iron Man kind of freely flying around using the same beam ability, uh, but it's significantly less enhanced and it looks much uh, uh, weaker and he doesn't have those uh, gadgets behind him. Uh, so it's basically, I think the distinction between these two isn't just the Hulk uh, power up that he gets. It's also the stance switch ability that we've described um, uh, just now. I've just called this ability Rocket. It's a simple rocket that comes out of Iron Man. It deals damage in an area. It looks like it's maybe only 50 or 25 damage, so not much damage at all. And there's no knockback applied to the person that's hit down there either. So it seems just like kind of a standard ability he can throw out in between other abilities rather than anything like super crazy impactful, but it's definitely not his centerpiece. Lastly, we go over Maximum Pulse. This is his ultimate ability. Make no mistake, this thing that you're seeing here at the beginning is just his MVP pose. So that's like at the end of the game, whoever has as MVP has some like crazy animation or whatever. We've seen that for most of the characters. Uh, I played it at the beginning of this video. It's really hard to tell how much damage this is doing, unfortunately, because we don't ever see any of the people's health bars. So it's hard to say if this is meant to be like a crazy uh, wipe ultimate. I assume it's not. They're probably dramatizing this for the video. So the character's health bars are probably lower than what you would expect in a situation like this. Uh, but either way, a big AOE damage effect like this, it, it just cannot be bad uh, unless the damage numbers are just way too low. And that's only one balance patch away from changing. So <laughs> this is definitely going to be like a big hype ability that uh, you see a lot of. So 
Moving on to Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner is a start switch character, meaning that he has two, he's kind of like two characters in one. Bruce Banner and the Hulk, he is a tank class. Uh, while in Bruce Banner form, he has 20 ammo. While in Hulk form, he's a melee character, so he has uh, infinite ammo. Uh, and then his HP while he's uh, Bruce Banner is going to be 200 and 900 while in Hulk. With a caveat, there's a clip of him using his ultimate ability where he has substantially higher health. So I want to say that Hulk's health actually scales based on how much you've done with Bruce Banner or maybe how many times you've transformed into Hulk or something like that rather than having like a flat health value. Right before Bruce goes into his Hulk form, we can see that he has a grenade ability and we can see that same grenade attached to his waist. And we can also see his pistol with the 25 ammo pistol we talked about. They never actually show Bruce shooting this pistol. So we have no idea how it behaves. It could be, you know, a really fast shooting pistol. It could be really slow. It could be a burst pistol. And then before we move on to other Hulk abilities, uh, we'll take a look at that full ultimate that I was describing before. This is the same footage where he had 1500 health. I'm not exactly sure how this ultimate works. It looks like he's just going to be able to select a person and deal a bunch of damage to him. So single target ultimate ability, probably not the craziest thing for a tank, but he'll probably just use this every single time he goes into Hulk form because you probably just want to get the most value you can out of Hulk before you switch back into Bruce Banner. My current interpretation is that you'll be switching in and out of Bruce Banner relatively uh, frequently. I want to say like the obvious comparison that everyone wants to bring up, which is that it's similar to D.Va, but it's kind of reversed because you start the match as Bruce Banner and you kind of earn the Hulk. So there is like a, a meaningful difference there. Right after Hulk lands here, he does two left clicks on this person and follows it up with his right click ability, which is like this clap ability. It seems like it just does damage like right in front of him. So it could probably hit multiple targets, which is pretty important. We don't get an idea of how much damage it does because unfortunately the two left clicks that uh, Bruce does here does enough damage that even just one more left click would have killed the person so all we know about this right click is that it's at least as powerful as using the regular attack button on bruce <laughs> we get a quick look at infuse this is the same ability that had a team up effect while being used on iron man as i talked about at the beginning of this video you can use this on any character it just has a bonus effect when you use it on iron man um i imagine that this is going to be a simple damage buff maybe uh, an attack speed buff or something like that, though I just assume it's a flat damage buff because it doesn't make much sense to give an attack speed buff to Iron Man based on what we know about Iron Man so far. Uh, I do want to point this out because they did a little bit of trickery in the trailer and I noticed it and it kind of irritated me. But going into this fight, we can see this jump indicator for um, what I'll call Hulk's leap. Um, this is not tied to any abilities. We don't see him trigger any abilities here. It just kind of appears. So my current guess is that when you attempt to jump with Hulk, you'll see this kind of arcing arrow, as you see on your screen currently. Uh, and then you can choose to, uh, you know, get a crazy jump from there. I assume you could like hold this button. And uh, and the thing that they tried to convince you in the trailer is that Hulk is dragging Namor down here and then dealing damage when he hits the ground. But none of that's actually happening. Uh, if you slow down the footage, you can see that Namor starts to descend before Hulk makes contact with Namor. So Namor's already naturally falling. Uh, then they play another trick, which is right as Hulk lands, Hulk's doing a left click. So it looks like the, the landing from the uh, jump is dealing damage, but it's not. If you pay very close attention, you'll see the first burst of damage that comes from the left click here. It's the identical amount of damage coming from the second left click. So it's not the case that the jump is dealing damage or else we would see a discrepancy between those two damage numbers. So yeah, nothing major. It's just kind of interesting that they played such a big trick in the, in the trailer like that. Moving on to Spider-Man. Spider-Man's another DPS character. He is a melee character with 300 health. No team up effect for uh, Spider-Man just yet. Uh, we've seen two abilities from Spider-Man. Um, well, technically we've seen four of his abilities. We'll talk a bit about that in a second. Let's first take a look at Web Swing. We can see this at the beginning of the trailer, right when Doctor Strange is kind of entering the battlefield here. You see Spider-Man come in from the right. Watch how quickly this ability happens. It's very, very fast. He gains so much velocity. Boom, look at him go. So yeah, you can get a lot of movement out of this ability. It's worth mentioning that he only has three charges of this ability. We've seen that later on in his HUD. Moving on to his ultimate ability, the Amazing Spider-Man. People have compared this to Reaper's ultimate from Overwatch. It's a relatively decent comparison, but my guess is it's going to be dealing significantly less damage than Reaper's ability because it has a little bit of extra bonus. That bonus being once it hits enough times, it'll stun the target. So definitely like a big AoE wipe ability. You're going to see this clear a lot of team fights, and it's going to be super annoying to deal with. Uh, so be sure to snipe that Spider-Man out of the air if you want your team to be able to survive 
uh, their team fights. Now, I do want to point out that Spider-Man receives a 250 shield right as he goes into this ultimate. It's not entirely clear to me that the 250 shield is coming from his ultimate. It might be coming from an allied character that's off camera. So I don't want to say that he just gets a bunch of shield when he uses this ability, but it could make sense for him to get this shield to have a little bit of survivability during his ultimate because I assume he's like freely targetable the same way any character would be targetable for this type of effect. So yeah, it's just kind of like a built-in defense maybe, uh, but it could also just be a character from off screen. So keep that in mind. Not definitely getting 250 shield from his ult here, uh, but he very well could be. Uh, here's kind of like a bonus round for Spider-Man. Uh, we do get to see two of his abilities triggering, but unfortunately these abilities never actually hit a player. So we don't really exactly know how they work. If we slow down this clip from Black Panther, we can see Spider-Man attempting to use his web shot ability that we saw on the previous HUD. And unfortunately it just totally misses and we have no idea what happened there. And right before Spider-Man gets into a fight with magic, he goes for an uppercut ability that we also saw on his HUD and completely misses it. I assume that uppercut ability will lead to some type of hit stun so you can get in a bunch of free damage and the person's kind of interrupted through whatever they were doing before. Uh, and then also I assume web shot probably is just kind of like a standard-ish projectile, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Moving on to Penny Parker. Man, I was so excited about Penny Parker, but unfortunately I don't think her gameplay is going to be for me. Penny Parker is a tank. Uh, she's a melee character, but she does have some type of ammo. Uh, I'm going to call this 7 ammo. I'll talk a bit about that in a second. And then she has 950 health with an asterisk. In the one and only clip we see of her HUD, that 950 health is accounting for some shield that she has. So that shield might only be applicable during her ultimate. So I didn't want to truly count that as her total. So I just wanted to have that asterisk there. Now she has a wall crawl, which is really cool. We're going to see that in the first clip. Um, and then we're also going to see this web dash ability. It happens at the very beginning of the trailer. So it's a quick and blink and you'll miss it type of moment. She dashes from kind of, it looks like there's probably one building here to the little bit off camera. So it looks like she's kind of jumping from one platform to another using this kind of web dash ability. And then shortly after she runs up this wall. So cool movement tech from Penny Parker. During her ultimate, she's always moving forward. So she might be locked into this movement state. Uh, and then she's also leaving behind these mines. And these mines look really similar to, or I guess these drones, uh, which look very similar to the icon tied to her right click ability, the one with seven charges. So my current interpretation of this is that she uses her right click ability passively, and it doesn't count as using the, the ammo that's tied to it. Uh, while she's in her ultimate. She just kind of leaves behind these uh, mines or these drones or whatever. Uh, and it looks like, my, my guess is that if you step in these mines, it does bad things to you. Or if you step in that field. Uh, so she's kind of got a bit of AoE disruption stuff going on, which is really cool. And then also, each of her left clicks that she's doing while she's in this ultimate are applying knockback to these characters. So perhaps maybe like a particularly good way of knocking people off of the map, if there's scenarios where to do that. And then also... Uh, knocking people out of objectives, which is also super important. Definitely a tank doing her job, uh, but unfortunately, even though I'm a huge Penny Parker fan, I don't think that this character is going to be for me. It's just not the type of, of playstyle I'm looking for. Definitely a worthy addition to the roster though, and definitely uh, a cool moveset. Uh, just not my personal taste. On to Loki, our first support. Man, I'm really excited about Loki. I did not expect to be this pumped for Loki. Loki's probably the character I'm looking forward to most right now. Uh, he has 10 ammo, 250 health, and we have a pretty good idea of how all of his abilities work. So before we get into the footage of the abilities we've actually seen, I want to talk about two abilities that appear on his HUD that we can be reasonably certain how they work. So one is an invisibility ability. Uh, again, we don't know 100% for sure that this is an invisibility ability, but there was a couple journalists before we even got access to this gameplay footage who said that uh, Loki could indeed place illusions and could go invisible. Uh, we haven't seen him go invisible, but we have seen him place the illusions. So I assume that they're just correct about the ability to go invisible. And then also this icon just looks like an invisibility icon. Uh, and then the other icon seems to have some type of healing property applied to it. It just looks like it's a healing ability based on the plus icon. And also he's a support character, so it makes sense that he has some type of healing. Uh, it's unclear whether this would be self-healing or targeted healing, though I assume it's targeted healing. I've been wrong before though. Uh, moving on to the abilities we actually know about for Loki. These are super exciting. In this clip we see him use both his illusion slash turret and his swap ability. So his illusion slash turret works exactly how you might expect. Uh, it places an illusion and then it starts firing his regular attack. Now what's really cool about this, there's so many implications for this ability, but first of all, his turret gives us a look at how his weapon actually works. We can see Loki's turret shooting Hulk earlier on in the trailer, and we can see that Loki's uh, normal attack is going to have 
uh, a splash damage effect, so it explodes in a, in a small radius, but unfortunately it looks like he has a relatively low fire rate. Now, as we see later, he can swap positions with his turret, so or his illusion, I should say. So you could use it as kind of like movement tech, you could put it on top of a building and then teleport to it. So that's fun stuff you can do there. Um, and you could use it as almost like bait. You could set up your turret elsewhere in kind of like a safe position and then you could fake and pretend to be your turret sitting on top of a building perhaps maybe they ignore your turret and then if they come for you who is actually your turret you could teleport to your turret who's completely safe and now they're fighting a real turret instead of you lots of cool implications of how this ability works uh and yeah but very very cool uh big fan of this whole system uh, and then we also see your power's mind which is loki's ultimate ability where he can transform into another character Here's an important note to, to mention, he can use their ultimate ability and he instantly gains enough charge to do so. So, uh, very, very big impactful ability, you're going to see me play a lot of Loki, uh, because why wouldn't you man, you get to play every character in the game simultaneously, very, very fun. Moving on to our second support character, we have Rocket Raccoon, with 45 ammo and 8 ammo. Uh, one is tied to a healing ability and the other one's applied to a automatic hit scan weapon. He has an additional movement ability, it's a jetpack. I believe this just works by you passively holding your jump key. You're just going to kind of float in the air a little bit. Uh, and he also has a wall crawl. So let's take a look at that. At the very beginning of this clip, you'll see the wall crawl. He'll jump off of this building and then immediately go into his jetpack. He's just holding that button. None of his abilities are triggering while this is happening. So not tied to his ability there at all. Uh, and then he'll use his ride effect. Moving on to Namor. Namor's really cool. He's got lots of cool stuff going on. So Namor is uh, another damage character. He's got 250 health and uh, seemingly infinite ammo. But there's a big delay between when he can... Uh, fire so he's almost like a pseudo bolt action character we do see his bubble ability get used earlier on in the trailer but to be quite honest it's really hard to tell what exactly bubble is doing what exact utility you can get out of bubble because the way they used it was in kind of that quirky gimmicky way we were talking about before where they set up a specific event to happen in the trailer so it looked like hulk was doing something that he wasn't don't get me wrong it looked cool for the trailer but it's unfortunate for uh situations like this where we're trying to decipher how this ability works uh, because unfortunately we just we just don't really know much about bubble at this moment then we take a look at octo turret couple cool things going on here so um this first version of octo turret that you see on your screen that's his kind of default octo turret it just kind of fires naturally then we get to see the team up effect from um luna snow and he reuses the turret and we can see that this turret is kind of iceified it's got ice effects going on i assume maybe it slows people that it hits and then we get to see something really cool, which is if you've been paying attention to these turrets, and I'm going to slow down this footage so you can tell, these turrets are completely out of sync. They just kind of have their own individual timers. But as soon as Namor hits an enemy with his spear, all of the turrets immediately activate targeting the same person. Where are my League of Legends enjoyers at? I think this is similar to League of Legends uh, Heimerdinger, which is once he lands an ability, um, it's specific to, to some abilities, but... All of his turrets will stop what they're doing and target the person that you hit with that ability. I think Namor's got the exact same thing going on, which is exciting to see in this kind of 3D perspective as opposed to the top-down perspective in League of Legends. And yeah, I think Namor immediately shot up as soon as I saw his gameplay for me uh, on the list of characters I want to play. Namor, going into this reveal, I was like, I don't really want to play Namor. But after seeing his gameplay, I'm, I'm pretty excited about what namor could be bringing to the table he can only ever have three turrets in play at once we can see that based on his hud um so yeah really the only thing we don't know about him is his shift ability uh i didn't mention it but we can see him using his right click ability at first i wasn't sure whether this was right click or maybe some type of charge effect um but we can see on the left is his right click and on the right is his standard left click ability so the right click is more or less just like an enhanced version of his normal left click moving on to dr strange dr strange is a tank he only has six ammo but his standard left click works a little bit differently than other characters he has 600 health uh, but not to worry 600 health is pretty low for a tank i think based on what we've seen from other tanks but he has an 800 health deployable shield so we'll talk about that a little bit here in a second not deployable shield sorry a toggleable shield think like ryan hart from overwatch if you're familiar now his shooting effect or his fire effect or his attack effect whatever you want to call it seems to be akin to like a burst fire it bursts a certain number of um particles coming out of his hand and and i assume dealing damage to the person it hits i don't think this works as like three round burst or four round burst or anything like that i think the longer you hold it it'll burst for longer or the beam will will last longer and then you'll kind of reload so that, i think that's what's happening with the six charges unfortunately we never get to see it from his perspective but i think basically 
you could burst this for twice, or you could burst this for six, but at the end of the day, whenever you're done using this ability, there'll be some type of short cooldown, and then you'll restore back up to six. So six is just kind of a limitation on how long you can use this ability. That's my interpretation, uh, but, you know, I've been wrong before. Uh, we do see his shield being used at the beginning of the trailer while he's off screen, while we have the Hulk's perspective. That shield is pretty big. We fit a lot of people behind that, so it's going to be a big part of how you're pushing onto objectives. I think Doctor Strange is absolutely going to be a premier tank in this game. It's hard for this type of tank to not be a premier character because it's just such a unique piece of utility that not every character and not every tank is going to have access to. So he's definitely going to be like a primary tank for, for a lot of teams. Uh, then we see his portal ability. I have so many questions about the, how this portal ability works, but for now, all we can say is that it is a portal. There are so many things that could be going on with this, so many questions that I have. Like, does he have to go to point B to set up the portal at point B and then go back to point A to set up his portal there? Can he set up a portal at from point A and then like put it anywhere on the map? We can see through that portal. Can enemies go from point B to point A? Can you go to point A to point B, back to point A from point B? Can enemies see through the portal like we can? Or is that just a thing that only we can do? Or is it not based on what team you're on? Is it based on what portal you came from? Like if you go, if you set up your portal to go from point A to point B, can you see through portal A into what portal B can see, but portal B can't see back to portal A? There's so many implications for what you could do with this ability based on the specifics of how it works. Uh, but for now, all we can say about this ability is that it is a portal. And then his last ability that we get to see is Eye of Agamotto. It's his ultimate ability and it appears to just be a stun. Everyone gets freezed right after he uses it. There's so many ways that this could be working and it's not entirely clear which one of those ways it is working. I could see this being the type of stun effect where if you hit them, they like fall out of the stun. But I could also just see it being like a permanent team wipe style ultimate especially because there appears to be some type of startup animation for it where he's like kind of charging it up so big aoe stun can't be bad black panther is a dps character he's kind of our first like straight up melee assassin unless you talk about uh, spider-man that we talked about a little bit earlier he has 300 health which is a little bit higher than the traditional character and i quickly want to talk about what i think is a passive ability there's a couple shots where we see enemy black panthers we never see an allied black panther in this state but we see enemy black panthers in this kind of purpley glowy state and i was trying to identify what this is what i think this is is he gets some type of damage bonus based on his current max health and i think the limit is exactly 50 percent because in this clip where he's fighting against magic we can see he falls to almost exactly 50 percent health and on that hit he gets the purple glow so i think it is an exactly 50 percent health condition and i think at 50 percent health he's getting some type of damage buff but for what it's worth we can then extrapolate that this dash attack is dealing like 150 or so damage because that means this Black Panther that he's hitting just falls to 150 health right as he's getting hit or right before he gets hit. So dash attack must be dealing uh, 150 health or so because dash attack uh, totally just KOs the guy. Uh, speaking of dash attack, I guess I didn't even really talk about it. It's just a forward dash uh, ability. It's dealing damage to people in its wake. And we move on to this ability that I've called Cyclone for now. It seems as though the first hit of this is indeed a part of the ability. Uh, and then he jumps into this kind of like Cyclone kick thing. So yeah, pretty cool looking. Uh, unfortunately, you never get a look at his right click here, which is like spear shaped. So I assume this is a projectile for Black Panther. That'll be pretty cool to see, but we never see it. It has two charges. Um, should be a pretty fun ability. It looks like he might have a double jump or the ability to perch on walls as well based on this HUD icon. And then lastly, we have Tremble Before Bast, which is just a big AoE damage ability. It's kind of hard to notice as it quickly goes by, but these claws go really far back. It looks like it's just hitting in front of him and KOing this poor Doctor Strange and destroying this bridge, but you can see the visual effects for the claw all the way back at the furthest building in this hallway. So it's a really far reaching ability. Uh, definitely something to look out for, for sure. Moving on to our second uh, DPS assassin, unless you count uh, Spider-Man again. She has 250 health. She has a unique passive ability where wherever she's dealing damage, she's gaining shield. This happens both before and after her ultimate, so it's not something that's down to her ultimate. Uh, it's just like something that magic has. When she deals damage, she gains shield. I'm not sure how much shield she gains. It's probably based on the amount of damage she's dealing. It's probably some flat percentage. Her first ability is a dash uppercut. It seems to hit stun the opponent and throw them into the air. So I assume this works as some type of interrupt if the opponent's channeling some type of ability, like Iron Man charging up his beam or something like that. I assume you can knock them 
them out of that by throwing them into the air, which is pretty cool. Then during her ultimate, she shows off a portal dash uh, where she just kind of dashes from point A to point B. It seems like it's a relatively short range, uh, but at least during that time, she appears to be untargetable and I assume undamageable. So she's effectively immune during this dash. So you can definitely use this to get away or reposition for certain fights and understanding how to use this ability is going to be pretty important for magic because she's going to be a pretty high skill cap character. Most of these kind of melee assassin style of characters in these types of games are usually quite a uh, high skill cap just because they're usually quite squishy. So understanding where you need to be on the map at any given time is kind of important. Um, not kind of important, it's paramount. Uh, then she has Behold Dark Child, which is her ultimate ability. I assume that her left clicks have nowhere near this much range uh, when she's not in her ultimate ability, but you can see it's able to hit multiple people in a single slice. It covers a wide range, so if she really does gain shield based on the amount of damage she's doing, while she's in this ultimate, she's going to be really hard to kill because she's going to be able to hit multiple targets, so she's going to be getting a lot of shield, so you need to be able to kill her within like a rotation of her attacks or else she's just going to gain more and more shield and she's going to be more and more threatening. Definitely a really scary character. Not my type of character. Melee Assassins is not not usually the the place that I go when I play these types of games uh, but if it's the type of character you're into you definitely got a winner here I definitely think she's going to be super fun to play especially because of that passive shield gain moving on to Luna Snow she is a support character with 30 ammo her primary fire heals allies we never see it be targeted on an enemy though I assume it's going to deal damage to enemies uh, because currently she doesn't have any damage dealing abilities so I assume the left click can deal damage to enemies we have be stronger together it's her shift ability based on the visual effect we see at her feet I'm guessing this is a movement speed buff ability. Next up is Ice Energy. I assume this is a flat damage buff. We don't see Namor's speed increase at all. We don't see his shield increase. So I think it's just a damage buff, maybe even an attack speed buff. Uh, and of course, as we talked about before, it is a team map activation for Namor. So his turrets get a little bit stronger. We get a quick glimpse at her ultimate. It's not much to look at just yet because it's a very short clip, but we can see it's an AOE heal. People's health are increasing. It is affecting her, which is an important thing to mention, uh, but it's also affecting allies. While she's in this state during her ultimate, she also has this Q ability or this uh, heads up display um, notification saying that she can swap. If she presses Q here, she'll swap between whatever state she's in right now and another state. So I'm kind of thinking she has a Lucio thing going on where she can swap between healing and movement speed while she's in this state, while she's in her ultimate only. Uh, which would be pretty cool. And the last character we have to go over is Groot. Groot is a pseudo melee character. He's got kind of like this extending arm that he hits people with. And we don't know his HP because we never see any first person or we never see any gameplay from Groot's perspective. We see gameplay of Rocket on top of Groot, but never actually Groot himself. The one confirmed 100% ability we see from uh, Groot is this kind of ramp. I referred to it as the Fortnite ramp in my uh, notes because it looks very much like a Fortnite ramp where you just build something in front of him for a quick second. It's a very cool tech for flank routes and uh, you could use it defensively. And I'm sure it has some cool synergy with some characters who otherwise wouldn't typically have like the craziest movement who wouldn't be able to get up onto certain areas of the game. Uh, Groot can let you do that. Kind of like a May wall or a Sage wall uh, that you see in, in Valorant or Overwatch. So definitely a lot of utility to be had in that type of ability historically in these types of games. Uh, and then I think we get to see Groot's ultimate ability. He says, I am Groot. Uh, and while I can't confirm this is his ultimate ability, I would be shocked if this ability that pulled five people together wasn't Groot's ultimate ability. All right, that's it from me. That is all the information I could mine from the trailer that we got for Marvel Rivals. Yes, that was a long video for what was a very short trailer, but what can I say? There's a lot to talk about. Thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.